Hello, and welcome to our course, Calling All First Responders, Real-Time Continuous Glucose Monitoring Awareness and Diabetes Emergencies. We know that first responders care for many people experiencing a diabetes-related emergency. So our goal with this program is to help you understand the challenges of living with diabetes and to better understand the reasons behind these emergency situations. We also want to introduce you to Dexcom and Real-Time Continuous Glucose Monitoring or Real-Time CGM. So you can understand how this technology might help people with diabetes to prevent some of these emergency situations. With this new information, if you do encounter a person using Real-Time CGM, we hope you will have a better understanding of how the technology can improve diabetes outcomes. Thank you for joining and we encourage you to watch all of these brief modules. As we begin, I'd like to introduce you to the program and the faculty. My name is Deborah Greenwood, and I'm on the clinical education team at Dexcom. I am a nurse and a diabetes care and education specialist, and I've been spent most of my career focused in primary care and type 2 diabetes with a special interest in technology and digital health. I've also been an advocate for using strength-based person-first language to help remove the stigma that's often associated with diabetes. I was the 2015 president of the American Association of Diabetes Educators, and now it's called the Association of Diabetes Care and Education Specialists. And I continue to be an active member and uh, involved in professional service. I am passionate about diabetes and believe CGM can empower people with diabetes to take control of their diabetes. Now I'd like to introduce our principal faculty, Frances Damien. Fran has worked at Boston Children's Hospital her entire career, and her specialty is pediatric emergency nursing. And she served as the nursing director in emergency services for close to 30 years. Her current position is manager of multi-specialty clinics and two satellites of Boston Children's Hospital. Fran has lived with type 1 diabetes for 27 years, and she manages her diabetes for more than 20 years with continuous glucose monitors. She relies on CGM technology to optimize her diabetes management and overall health. For the past 10 years, she has volunteered as a nurse at Diabetes Training Camp, or DTC, an education and sports performance camp for adults with type 1 diabetes. And for the past five years, she's also led an ongoing development of Teen Boot Camp, a three-day program for teen athletes with type 1 diabetes and their parents. Through her work at DTC, she has a rich community of friends living with type 1 diabetes and has an appreciation for the array of challenges people with type 1 diabetes face given their unique circumstances. So please welcome Frances. Thank you, Deb. I'm really privileged to be here and I'm really looking forward to um, providing this education for our fabulous first responders. So we'd like to start by sharing some diabetes statistics with you. Currently, over 37 million Americans live with diabetes, with the majority of those being type 2. So that's about 90% live with type 2 diabetes. So during this course, we want you to be aware that you can encounter diabetes emergencies regardless of the type of diabetes. While we'll show you how real-time CGM can help support diabetes management and reduce emergency services, only 2.4 million um, in the US at this time use CGM. Thankfully, CGM use in type one diabetes has increased from 38% in 2018 up to 60% in 2021. So we know CGM use is growing and it's expected to continue to grow. Our recent survey showed that about 40% of people that now use blood glucose monitoring do plan to move to CGM. We also know that diabetes accounts for many emergency department visits. In 2016, there were 16 million emergency department visits for adults with diabetes. And of those, a quarter of a million for, were for hyperglycemia crisis and another quarter of a million for hypoglycemia, which is why it's so important as first responders, you understand both of these diabetes emergency situations and also understand how real-time CGM can help. Fran, would you like to talk about the different types of diabetes? Yes. So let's explore the four main different forms of diabetes. 
So type one is characterized by beta cell destruction, which is creates a complete lack of insulin. Typically this process happens quickly and people appear ill. Type two is characterized by beta, beta cell dysfunction and insulin resistance. This is typically a very gradual process and people don't appear ill until much later in disease progression. Gestational diabetes is characterized by beta cell dysfunction and insulin resistance during pregnancy. I like to describe this as a test or a challenge to the pancreas. The increased hormones in pregnancy create insulin resistance. If the pancreas can't manage the glucose during pregnancy, these women are at risk for type two in the future. And finally, prediabetes is characterized by insulin resistance, impaired glucose tolerance, and at risk for type two. Approximately 96 million American adults, more than one in three have prediabetes. Of those with prediabetes, more than 80% don't, know, don't even know they have it. So prediabetes puts an individual at increased risk for developing type two diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. So let's go into detail about type one and type two. Type one diabetes is an autoimmune condition where the body's own immune system attacks the cells in the beta cells in the pancreas that produce insulin. The exact cause of this is unknown, but it is a genetic condition. So people are predisposed to diabetes and then something happens in the environment, a triggering event, such a virus or an autoimmune response that destroys the beta cells. The pancreas stops making insulin so people need insulin to survive, either by injections or by a pump. About 1.25 million Americans live with type 1 diabetes, but it is only about 10% of the total diabetes cases. It is on the rise, and it is estimated that 5 million people in the United States will have type 1 diabetes by 2050. Type 1 diabetes is associated with increased annual health care costs compared to those without diabetes. And unfortunately, less than one third of people with type one diabetes in the United States are achieving target glucose levels. Type one diabetes can occur at any age, but most often it starts with children and young adults. Another type of diabetes is called GLADA, latent autoimmune diabetes of adults. It is a slow progressing form of autoimmune diabetes that destroys cells that produce insulin. People with LADA can be misdiagnosed with type two diabetes because of their age and because the pancreas still produces some insulin when first diagnosed. So let me talk a little bit about type two diabetes. So as I mentioned, this is the most common type of diabetes with again, almost 90% of the people of that 37 million that live with diabetes have type two. And as Fran mentioned, there's an additional 96 million that have prediabetes, which again can may progress to type two. So type two diabetes is genetic and has both non-modifiable and modifiable risk factors. So what does that mean? So non-modifiable are things that you can't change. For example, it's genetic, right? You have a family history. Certain race and ethnicities have higher incidence. For example, Amer African-American, Hispanic, Asian, Pacific Islanders, American Indian, and Alaska Native people. Uh, An older age increases your risk. Again, that's not modifiable. Um, and um, th those are kind of the key things that you can't change. What is modifiable is achieving a healthy body weight, decreasing, uh, having a sedentary lifestyle, healthy meal planning, and also managing other uh, comorbidities like blood pressure and lipids. Well, those can all help prevent or delay and diabetes and also help you manage it. Now, there are many misconceptions and myths related to type 2 diabetes that people cause their own disease by eating too much and not being active. And as we mentioned, while food and activity can lead to progression, we know that that is not the cause. While you can be diagnosed at any age, it's more common after age 30. However, there's been a very significant rise in the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes in children recently. Again, the main cause is associated with what we call insulin resistance, where the insulin is not as effective as it was in the past at lowering glucose. And then over time, the beta cells that produce that insulin become exhausted and no longer function. 
There's also an overproduction of the hormone glucagon, especially overnight, which raises glucose levels in the morning. And as we mentioned, being overweight or sedentary can progress the condition. What's, uh, and most people with type two diabetes will need insulin over time. What is very interesting is that what they're learning as people with type two diabetes are having bariatric surgery, that glucose levels actually come into the normal range immediately prior to people actually losing weight. So this is really providing us some interesting evidence that the condition is very tied to the body's gut hormones and that it is a very complex condition. So let's review our goals for this course. We have three main goals, right? We would like you to understand real-time continuous glucose monitoring and the benefits it provides. We want you to ide uh, identify the most common diabetes emergencies, which are severe hypoglycemia, diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA, and hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state or HHS. And then we're going to look at some different emergency scenarios where CGM, especially real-time CGM, may be helpful. Now the course has the following modules. We're in the introduction now. Um, module two is on stigma and that uh, can be associated with diabetes, especially when we talk about diabetes emergencies. Then in module three, we'll provide an overview of what real-time CGM is and the benefits of CGM. Then we'll, in modules four and five, we'll talk about hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia emergencies. And then in module six, we're gonna have uh, some special scenarios focused on the older adult and also repeated 911 calls, again, to help you understand some of the potential reasons. And then finally, we'll review the Dexcom CGM system. So if you do encounter someone in the field that's using CGM, you'll have a better understanding of how it works, again, and the value to both people with diabetes and the healthcare system. So we're happy you're here and we hope you'll gain some valuable information. And um, our next module is going to be on diabetes and stigma.